Russell Brand, right? So this situation is kind of crazy. Uh, Jimmy just did a show with Russell, so that's going to be interesting. The Gray Zone wrote some stuff the other day. Intel linked UK official pushing censorship of Russell Brand. We kind of talked about this the other day. Um, this is the first time that we know of of which a platform suspended somebody, not for the content they put on online, but for their behavior and their actions offline. Alleged. Alleged. You're right. Alleged actions offline. Well, I mean, in in the court of public appeals, according to the ruling class, he's guilty. And that's why they were able to 86 him. Kim, what are your initial thoughts right away as far as YouTube demonetizing him? I mean, I know it wasn't surprising to any of us over here, but your initial thoughts. They didn't thoughts. demonetize him. Yeah. They're making the money on it. They're just not right. giving it to him. Yes. They're still they running will, ads. It is monetized. Yes. They're just not sharing the profits they're making off this terrible allegation demand. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not deplatforming him. I mean, it's completely for them to, from allegations, for somebody to just be able to make an accusation against you. And then they say, okay, well, for one, there's no actual investigation that I know of happening. So it's yeah. not like police are involved. These women didn't go to the police. He wasn't arrested. He yeah. wasn't arrested. They didn't go to the police. They, these women didn't even come forward. These journalists went and found yeah, all no, of that's these women. The other thing. No one came forward. It's a very apparent immediately. Yeah, these these this news organization went around asking hundreds of women about their experiences with Russell Brand. They happened to find four that had some stories and they wrote this up in a in a media piece. And now he's losing his livelihood over accusations and there's no police investigation. He hasn't had due process. There's been no trial, no jury. And even if he is guilty, honestly, he should still be allowed to make money. His YouTube channel has nothing to do. He's not like yeah, promoting. Well, you're, not, you're not allowed to earn a living. Once you're a convict you of some your kind. Innocence, and even then. Even if you're guilty, you should still be allowed to earn a living. I mean, we have people that they're convicted of crimes. They just get probation. They keep their jobs. Yeah. They're able to have jobs and livelihoods. I mean, if it has nothing to do, it's not like he's on the platform using it to commit crime. It's one thing if you're using the platform to commit crime. Yeah. But it's another thing if you're just making a living. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Even if he's guilty, even if he's found guilty in a court of law, if they don't want him to make money, put him in jail. Yeah. That's how you do that. That's how you punish people. But then when they're out of jail, you have to allow them the right to make money. And they're not. I mean, this is insane. It's insane that an accusation, an accusation alone with no police investigation, nothing okay. could actually cost you well, your for livelihood. for some people, I mean, some people, no, that's not enough. We'll ignore it. You know, like the president of the United States. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, exactly. 14-year-old daughter. Allegedly, to, you know, she could have just wrote that in to, the diary. Yeah, she might have lied to her diary. Yeah, she lied. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that's real because they sent the Secret Service to, or FBI yeah. to kick down... And, and Tara Reid's in, in Russia. She can't, she's can't. she got to hide on yeah, out so over there. Yeah, so it's real weird how we pick and choose. Secondly... Yeah. It's always sexual misconduct now. That's a real broad term. Yeah. Where yeah. I don't know what the hell it means. It seems to mean whatever you want in the moment. Absolutely. If you don't like the person. Meanwhile, <laughs> Cardi B still has her YouTube yes. channel. 10 million people. And she's admitted to drugging. Drugging and, guys up yeah. while she was a stripper. Was she, money. Well, I don't think she was about masking up, was she? No. It, 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 <laughs> Didn't well, she try to spread the, spread the word? <laughs> well, she talked about her... I don't want to talk about it, her friends <laughs> or the safe effective vaccine. I'd never do. What that. do you? What do you? What do you guys? What do you think though? Kim, to the point where they YouTube goes, it's a private entity. We can do what we want. It's up to us. We don't have to. We don't have to monetize you if we don't want to. What do you say to that? Because this is a this is a subject that's very personal to me. My YouTube channel, Combo you, Couch. You don't get to monetize steal the person's money. Yeah. If it's such an immoral thing, yeah. then no one makes money on. Well, what, let's say or just well, take well, them off say the if platform. If they weren't making money, if they weren't huh? running ads, could you still be? Could it be? Legal to demonetize this person because you don't like them and let that person make money. Yeah, that's money? discrimination. That yeah. should be some. So that should be somehow considered a discriminatory. Pr uh, some everybody you know, signed somehow. on for this. Everybody thought it was great. That's what cancel culture was the whole time. Was yeah. a way to make your company like you. You have rights in America, but you're also a citizen of Google. And Google, you have different rights. Right. And everybody just signed on for that because they were so eager to like get it. They're parasocial enemies. Well, I'd even like if to they've know completely how, demonetized him, even if they're not making any money off the ads, they're still getting traffic from him. Oh, yeah. So they're getting the eyeballs to the platform. And then what do they do? They recommend all these other videos to you after you watch one of his that they then can make money off of. So even if they're totally taking ads off of his current content, which they might be yeah. at, for this for a, a little while. They're still making money off of him by simply having that big of a person on their platform. If they don't want him, if, they, if they're wanting to be moral and say, well, we just don't even want to support this type of person because we don't like him, take him off the platform completely. Actually put your money where your mouth is on that. But they're not willing to do that. Yeah. 
And I think that would be illegal, too, because then I have to play even across the board. I mean, we have Section 230 of the NDAA, which says you can, act, you can only act as a platform, not a publisher. You can't pick winners or losers. Yeah, right. That's violate, directly violating. Violating, that. yeah. yeah. And then also just the, if you even just not even pay attention to that, the public easements. They use our satellites, our roads, our property to run their lines. They've entered into a contract with the United States citizens, which means they have to honor our laws, including the First Amendment, which is freedom of speech. Let's get into this really quickly, and we'll just jump and get a little bit more opinions. Allegations of sexual impropriety imp <laughs> and the abuse by comedian and podcaster Russell Brand by the British media prompted YouTube to demonetize the star's popular channel on September 20th. The gray, gray Zone can now reveal that the YouTube's financial censorship of Brand is a result of an effort waged by former British government minister who was responsible for London's crackdown and dissent during the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, I knew it. Wow. Was, wow. I knew it was because that's back when it came out. Prince Charles had that extra money and was paying that cutout. You know, they were fresh off Siberia, uh, uh, Syria propaganda, and they were, it was like they're paying bread tube people to go after oh, people. Oh, I remember that. The anti lockdown people. Yes, they said. yes, yeah. yes. Um, does anybody want to make an opinion about <laughs> this real quick? The fact that right off the jump, that another government, a government official, is telling a social media platform. I mean, like, yeah, well, I mean, I. I this, is, this is Big Brother shit over here. This yeah. is 1984. Good work by Kit Clarenberg. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know. Well, I mean, they got a hold of the letter, right? And they saw the letter. But your thoughts on a government, because I've heard you talk about this, a government telling a social media platform, I mean, this should be really scary stuff. And my other question that I didn't get a chance to ask is, all right, we know what the problem is. We know what's going on. We identified that it's wrong. How the hell is, how the hell is citizens, can we fix this thing? I mean, uh, go what, to what, Rumble. What, well, what, knock on it? We'll go to Rumble. We'll, we'll talk You're about that You're going to have to, like, look, uh, you have to do nothing but support the places that don't do this. Yeah. And also... Somebody's got to, like, really take this all the way up probably to Supreme Court. Somebody's well, this gotta, is like, the British government. So, unfortunely, they don't have the First Amendment. Here, though. Right. But this is but what happened here is you've got a British national, Russell Brand. You have the British government. They don't have the First Amendment. I don't know what they have. What do they have, like, an agreement with the crown or something like that? I don't know what the exactly. Brits. I don't know what the <laughs> Brits have. Ask the we queen. have a deal with the <laughs> crown. <laughs> so I don't know what they can actually do about this. And maybe that's the, the, you've got U.S. government officials. I'm sure doing deals with the U.K. Parliament, saying, "Hey, why don't you guys take this on? Because we're getting in trouble with First Amendment yeah, because they collude. of right." So now our government is actually in trouble with the courts because of censorship. And so now they're doing the they're having the British. Do the dirty work saying, yeah. well, you guys don't even have a First Amendment, so go ahead and yeah. and, and tackle this. Because if the U.S. government were to do this, this would be a violation of the First Amendment. To have a government tell a platform, take this person off, even though this person has committed no crime at this point. That yeah. you know, He's not been convicted, so we can say he's innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, but if you ever watch any of the hearings when they go, when they when they whisk the lords of the underground, or the, you know, the head of YouTube or the head of Elon Musk or Facebook, whatnot – the Congress on both sides of the aisle are both pushing for censorship. Now, the conservative part, you know, they're pushing the, the old rhinos, the old establishment conservatives. They want China stuff and right. Iran stuff and Palestinian. And they want all them. You know, they, want that, they want that as the front to yeah. take yours away. And yeah. At least they want to put up a front of a foreign threat. The guess, left, them, yeah. people like AOC will openly say, see, deplatforming works. That we need to, it's violence, right? We got to stop the violence. Yeah. So they do have the same type of behaviors. Maybe they're not doing this directly like this way, but it's the same type of behavior by both sides. I mean, the West in general does this stuff. In Australia, they were doing this. In New Zealand, they were doing this. The censorship, the lockdowns, everything that's going on. The five eyes countries, yeah. they do this all the time. I do think it's a little worse right now on the left, though. I do think that the liberals and the Democrats are going harder. 1,000%. Yeah. That, I mean, both sides do problem. it, but they're doing it more. It, back when I was a kid, I feel like, I grew up in conservative Idaho, so I, yeah. I feel like yeah. conservatives were the ones who were wanting to silence people for having alternative lifestyles, oh, yeah. or if you didn't yeah. believe in God, they'd want to censor you. They were you. burning the Harry Potters back in the day. Yeah, I, exactly. Was that a hilarious turn when it went from them? <laughs> the witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, they burned Harry Potter for witchcraft, and then later it was like, yeah. <laughs> leftist burning Harry Potter? Like, either way, it's getting Now burned. they love Harry Potter because of um, J.K. Rowling is, you know, like she, oh, yeah, now the conservatives <laughs> really she's all like, about women. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll say this much, too, as well. The the left that's kind of pushing this right now, right, it's completely different. It's, once again, protecting people. There's a small group of conservatives, the libertarian-minded people, the Thomas Masseys, the Rand Pauls. So you do have these pockets of people who don't want that censorship. Well, this they do the want same. some freedom of speech. Now, this is like 
state crafted like this isn't like some grassroots thing yeah okay they didn't come forward a, a media apparatus owned by somebody got paid by somebody as a favor you know th this is like way beyond whatever it was like seven years ago oh, yeah yeah oh i mean it's way beyond in, in my times. lifetime ever i've never seen it like this you know me and my mother were just talking she's like what's going on in this country we used to be freedom of speech you know so i know a lot of people the older generation they're even shocked to what's going on i'm like well, you know, some of us, we're going to have to buckle our seatbelts because it's just going to get worse. I mean, yeah. what they did to a lot of us in this room over here is they tried to demonetize us and kneecap us and shut us up. They didn't want us doing what we we're doing over here. So, you know, it's going to be a long battle. Uh, a, spokesperson has a spokesperson has claimed uh, if a creator's off-platform behavior harms our users, employees, or ecosystem, we take action. The allegations against brands date... Uh, back between 2006 and uh, 2013, and have yet uh, have not yet been proven in court. Yeah, we left something out over the, there. The one prior to this, where it says that this marks the first time this marks the first time a content creator has been financially punished by a company for reasons other than videos published on the site. That's actually not accurate. Yeah, uh, this they they actually changed their policies a couple of years ago, where they actually said. If you do behavior off the platform that we don't like, we'll, we'll remove you from the platform. That had been going on with Twitch was like the first to do that. Mm -hmm. So Twitch actually took a lot of content creators off of their site for, for behavior off of Twitch. It had nothing to do with Twitch. If they said something in a tweet or they said something on a different site, they actually would remove them. And I want to say guys like uh, it wasn't PewDiePie, but it was guys like that in that realm. And yeah. they were yeah, a little, lot of them had video been, games or strippers on Twitch. Right. Yeah. And a lot of them had been deplatformed because of behavior on a different platform. So they're like cross colluding now. Yeah, right. And that's what government officials are doing. They're pushing. And that's what the, the letters from the UK parliament to rumble and to TikTok, they were saying, you know, we want him to be completely deplatformed or demonetized from yeah. all of the platforms. And they're wanting, I think there was even a push for a, a rule that I know that they were, the government was pushing for, the UK government at least, pushing for when a person gets demonetized on one platform, yes. that they are to be de yes. demonetized on all platforms. Yes. They want like a, a relationship amongst all yes. social media sites to do it collectively together this is something that josh holly it. pointed out one day about you know youtube and facebook and twitter sharing data and information with each other and you know acting as one unit and then once again who's directing them the government is telling them which way to go we see this all the time when they bring them to congress they're they were punishing them more they, they were, why don't you do more why don't you censor more so they're pushing them and they're letting them know what's what by the way i want to point this out because you just mentioned this uh Dynage, who's the, the British Parliament uh, person who wrote the letter, informed the companies she was concerned that Brand may be able to profit from his content published on both platforms. She then suggested to him they impose financial penalties. We would be grateful if you would confirm whether Mr. Brand is able to monetize his post, including videos relating to the serious accusations against him. So you were talking about this the other day, too, as well. When he makes a video responding back remember he goes hello my lovely people today the show's not going to be the same it's going to be a little bit different we've had these things i'm getting out ahead of it they were saying that that video right there yeah. was the guilty action that he took place on this so Him he couldn't even come out and defend innocence. himself right he said yeah like he they, actually stated he he's innocent absolutely yeah. this yeah yeah they don't even want a video of him saying, I'm innocent. Yeah. They're saying that was wrong of him to declare his innocence. Yeah. I mean, are you Wait, kidding we all me? We're going to get a nice Julian Assange trial. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Uh, once again, too, as well, what Kim pointed out, very important. He's he's denied any of the ac accusations. He said everything he's done was consensual. Wait, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. We want to. Uh, we want to what the so platform is doing. Okay, yeah. go ahead, it, says, go ahead. it says post including his videos relating to the serious accusations against them and what the platform is doing to ensure that creators are not able to use the platform to undermine the welfare of victims of inappropriate and potentially illegal uh, oh, behavior. I'm sorry. Did you say potentially illegal? Yeah. Potentially. So these are serious accusations of something we're not even sure that it's a crime. Right. Yeah. And, and she's is, calling them victims and they're not victims. They're accusers. The potential went before in front of victims, not in front of potentially illegal. Yeah. It also says the committee's letter to Rumble contained a direct demand for demonetization. Unreal. I hate that word. We would like to know whether Rumble intends to join YouTube in suspending Mr. Brand's ability to earn money on the platform. Are the you with us or against accused. us, Kurt? 
I, I just am imagining out there some masked dipshit with a sock puppet account on Twitter <laughs> who furiously is like really into this idea that, that this is how the future should be. Yeah. Mask me up and then have all of them get together and censor the things I don't like. Yeah. Well, see, to me, this story also hits another point, right? We were talking about this the other day, Kim, when I called you up, because a lot of people are talking about Rumble, right? And who owns Rumble, which is Peter Thiel. And there's a lot of questions. I about think Peter he just Thiel. is an investor. Is he? An, yeah, I don't a, think he owns owner. it. I think he just the invested. Owner, a, well, the CEO is Chris uh, yeah, Pavlovsky. Pavlovsky yeah. But Peter Thiel does have a stake inside uh, stake Rumble, in most sure. a decent sized stake in most tech things. In most he? tech things, for a while, I mean, and stuff. like yeah, and I that's can't why eat without Bill Gates' investment, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of potential dirty things from Peter Thiel and stuff like that. When we talk about people like Catherine Austin Fitz, I don't know if you've heard that name before. She's pretty popular. She would once talk about Bitcoin saying, don't build your own prison, right? You think Bitcoin is a way of kind of opting out of the American dollar, getting your own freedom. But if you go into it, there could be whales who could set a trap, sink the, the Bitcoin, and now you're left with nothing. And she would say, don't build your own jail. Now, a lot of us know, we're, we're talking out here, we know what YouTube is. A lot of us have kind of migrated over to Rumble. Kim, is there any concern from you? Because here's Rumble acting like the hero really quick. Uh, in a withering response to Dinages, I hope I said her name right. If I didn't, so what? Letter. <laughs> Rumble CEO Chris Pawlowski asserted that while not noting his company obviously deplores sexual assault, rape, and all serious crimes and believes that both alleged victims and the accused are entitled to full and serious investigation, Pawlowski went on to slam YouTube's demonetization of brand, declaring that Rumble stands for very different values and empathetically rejects the UK Parliament's letters, demands. So they're looking like the hero. They're looking like the beacon of freedom of well, speech right now. Well, they did the right thing now. they should do. I mean, I don't care they if they're do. really not good. If you did the thing that you should do, great. I don't care about you personally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But isn't there the potential, Kurt, and this is we're going to ask him too as well, that this rumble could be a trap door, right? For what? Everybody, everybody goes over the rumble because they don't want to go to YouTube, and then rumble eventually down the road changes their behavior and kind of mimics what YouTube is doing, and now we're screwed because now yeah, you've got so the two what? biggest entities okay. controlling speech. So I, and I, I, I get it because people have been criticizing rumble, and uh, you know I'm an exclusive creator for rumble, so yeah. I'm one of the few shows like rumble, like uh, Russell Brand and Glenn Greenwald that are that rumble contracts to do exclusive shows for their platform so i've heard this argument before of oh well if you go over there then all it is is just a trap but okay so what like what are your what's your alternative <laughs> like, well, yeah. to stick around at youtube and, and be in the what's it's not a trap we know what youtube is at this point right stand now stand in the fire yeah, yeah. so if you go so to, <laughs> don't to, get out of the burning house it might be bad right, out there. <laughs> right because you might go into another house that might burn down i mean look like at yeah, this yeah. point rumble's not burning down at this point it is not a house on fire and when it does then we'll leave that one I've too never been and we'll go somewhere to else rubble, ru rubble to rumble i've mm -hmm. never been never care i would like I, would, I go on it more now just because they did this. And so, I can hey. tell you, uh, as an exclusive creator for Rumble, that we don't get, I, I don't get for my show any direction at all. Yeah. I didn't even know Peter Thiel was one of the investors. I had no idea about that. I've yeah. never been, his name has never been brought up except for what I saw on Twitter from people criticizing. Yeah. Uh, I We don't get any direction on content, nothing, like zero. Yeah, yeah. The only thing they ask, because I have sponsors on my show and they're the ones who get me those sponsors, is they ask, you know, I have in my contract built in, I can reject any of the sponsors that I don't like. Anybody that I look into and I say, no, they're not a right fit for my show. I have the right to do that. So I have complete control over my show. Yeah. No one's telling me, oh, we want you to cover this topic or we want you to be this way on this type of thing. Nothing. In fact, I know for a fact yeah. that Rumble has tried to get people with very different viewpoints than me on their platform, trying to entice them over, trying to make them exclusive creators as well. People who are completely opposite, very, very left. Yeah. In a lot of in, it just, but they won't come over because you know how the left is thinking right now. They think, oh no, I don't want to be a part of that right wing conspiracy theory. Well, place. now they're brands. It's not. It's like <laughs> what they don't want to be not a part of is like the main thing that like what Jimmy Kimmel is in. Yeah. Like in that sphere of I like know. MSNBC. Yeah. It's like, I don't even think it has a left or right. Because if you left and got screwed, I'm sure they'll go over there. Somebody that got screwed. But, right, but they'd have to get screwed first. But they've been trying to reach out to people that just have very different leftist viewpoints 
And yet they're kind of, you know, how the people on the left are being right now where they're just saying, no, I don't want to associate with you. I don't want to be involved well, like, with you. It also yeah. depends on who they are because they might be getting their money from a source where that. Sure. Right. Depend. Well, right. You know? the three big lefties were you, Glenn Greenwald and Russell Brand that went over there. That you Well, know, yeah, but exclusive. we're considered right wing conspiracy theorists I, I know now. we're considered right wing to the left, even though, you know, your audience considered me more <laughs> left than you, which we talked about. Uh, but I don't want to leave the circle of Amber Heard believers. Yeah. Here's the thing that really upsets me. You can you can be critical of Kim Iverson about her positions on whatever. And I am. And, that, <laughs> and you, you should. <laughs> but the fact that, you know, I know you from what, what ha went on at the Hill. You know, you you always used to tell people, the Hill doesn't tell me what to do. They don't let me say anything. And your coverage on COVID over there was amazing, right? You know, we were few of us lefties were talking about it. And I thought what you were able to do over there was awesome. And then when you didn't get a chance to interview Dr. Fauci, you said, that's it. I'm not going to be restricted. I'm walking the walk. I'm talking the talk. Has it been the same kind of thing over at Rumble? You did just mention right over there. They don't ever tell you what you can say, what you can't say, anything like that. Can you put that on the record for us right now? Yeah. I mean, I, ne I never get any editorial feedback, not even feedback from them. Like, hey, this show did really well. That one, th nothing. Zero zilch. They stay completely out of it. They, yeah. I own 100% of my show. They just ask me to produce a show for them every day that goes exclusively on Rumble for the first 24 hours before it gets clipped up and maybe taken to other spots. Um, and they have zero say on any of the content. And if they did, I would walk. And that is part of my contract. They're not allowed yeah. to have anything to do with my editorial. Yeah. And all of us are like that. And they don't want it. They're not even asking for it. They, yeah. That's not even a point in the contract they contest. Yeah. They're like, no, that's our point. Our point is we want a bunch of different people on here with a bunch of different viewpoints and you can say what you want to say. Yeah. Um, so even if it is like we all get ushered over to the house that's not burning and then they set it on fire. OK, then we have to leave that house and another platform. And, and Rumble understands that. And that's why they responded the way they did. They understand the reason people are there. The reason creators are there. The reason people are watching yeah. is because they're not censoring. The minute they censor, they stab themselves in their own chest. Yeah. So why would they do that? They've chosen to go down a certain path. Now, that could change. And it always does usually. So I I kind of expect that, you know, in the future, 10, 15, 20 years from now, any company gets so big yeah. and they become so dependent on whatever it is that they start to have to kowtow to whatever that is. Right. Yeah. And so I kind of expect any company reaches a, a tipping point where they have to go in that direction. I would hope that never happens. But I know realistically it usually yeah. does. Even Twitter, in a way, you know, Elon Musk, when he got a hold of it, realized, oh, crap, uh, now reality is set in. And if I don't get keep these advertisers on my platform, then I've just lost 40 billion bucks. Right. So even Elon Musk then started to have to change his tune a little bit on Twitter to try to keep it as free speech as possible, but also yeah. still catering somewhat to the he big money He never let interest. Alex Jones back on, so that's why we know yeah. it's not freedom of speech completely. And I'm not a big Alex Jones fan at all, but once again, if you're going to... You don't think he do? owes a trillion dollars for his crime? I know. I mean, it's just crazy. A trillion it's, dollars? It's, Is that it's how much he owes? Republic. It's insane. It's absolutely nuts. So just really quickly, so we show, this is the UK MP who pressured Rumble to demonetize Russell Brand and receive donation in kind from Google. So she received money for her campaign uh, to the tune of, uh, you know, $4,000. But, I mean, she's just part of the whole clan, the whole mentality. Uh, the lockdown left, of course, is what we like to call them. Um, and I want to play a clip really quick. I know we have a lot of stuff here, but let me play this quick clip. This was on uh, GB News. Uh, take a listen to Allison Pearson talking about the whole situation. It's a completely outrageous, not just, not only is it outrageous, it is chilling and sinister. This is a senior parliamentarian writing to these independent media platforms, trying to <coughs> ruin Russell Brand, who, as you say, is accused of, he has serious and credible charges against him, which is basically setting out to destroy him, to remove every source of, of income. You know, he is a human being, Dan. His wife is heavily pregnant with their third child. Well, she's actually given birth. Oh, has she? Just, given? just in the last few weeks. And so oh, we should have some compassion that. for that woman. Just, you know? just some kind of decency. And I think, I mean, you know, Sean, Sean will speak more learnedly about this than I do, but this is a total breach 
of the way that the state should be mm. behaving to private businesses. And I should add, Dan, as well, because mm. we're on GB News, that uh, Caroline Dynish has also written to GB News, making a complaint about the brilliant Bev Turner, a wonderful presenter here, about opinions she expressed on Russell Brand. Bev is allowed to express any opinion mm. she wants to. It's a free country and it's a free news channel. So I think it's really, really alarming development. And I would like to see the Prime Minister or people in number 10 telling Dame Caroline where to get off. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't think that's going to happen because Rishi Sunak is part of that whole clan too as well. He's the <clears throat> central bank digital currency guy running the show in Great Britain. And what I also want to point out right now is I think Russell Brand's going to be okay, right? He's going to find a way. Financially, he's going to be okay. But it was outlets like the combo couch. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about everybody else. Now they That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Kurt. That's the big issue because it's the smaller people they're kneecapping. The people who are on the rise who are starting to get things going. Our guy, Joey uh, Sakata, they took his channel down right when he was starting to get into momentum. He never went back to it. We know other people that have done, they've done this too. They just go, whoa, whoa. they just go away. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my God. <laughs> they, they just go away. Um, so this is some scary, scary news. Uh, let's put a bow on this section because we are running uh, out of time. Your thoughts, Kim, on Russell Brand and your thoughts on this censorship. I mean, whether he's guilty or not, it's not, I, you know, I, I do think that the accusations against him are serious. And I think that there's he's going to face some potential problems if there's still, you know, if, if they're able to still go to the to the police at this point. I don't know if there's a statute of limitations or whatever. I mean, the, the, the charges against him are serious. But I still think that a person, even if they're guilty or innocent, should be allowed to make their living as so as long as their living is honest. He makes an honest living. He's yeah. not doing anything illegal to make that living, and he should continue to be allowed to do that. I get it if they want to take people off that are promoting illegal activity, I suppose, or doing something illegal, then that's one thing. But it, it's it's really, really, really alarming that a government official yeah. is going and asking to ruin somebody who's just been accused. I it's I don't know. I thought we would get Listen, over this by now. I thought we'd be in a better by spot. The way. I mean, yeah, so what they're saying is that Hillary's been accused of murder. Exactly. That's a serious accusation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what, like, do you know? Uh, okay, it's not a matter of believe in women. Do I believe the British media and the British government? No. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I've never spoken to these women. I'm supposed to take the word of the media? No, I don't. Yeah. I already been through it with the Johnny Depp, which, uh, unbelievable yeah. how bad that was. Marilyn Manson, also innocent. I don't think that even gets pressed, does it? That no. psychopath, that guy was totally innocent. A bunch of these, and it's like, oh no, somebody said something that's good enough. Except Joe Biden, then all of a sudden, yeah. Me Too's done. That's yeah. over. Well, the the priority list about who we look at, like you said, we were talking about Joe Biden before and his accusations, and we have all these people that Ghislaine Maxwell went to jail for, but none of them, you know, got highlighted. Prince Andrew, who's right, the head of the crown I mean, over this there, his accusations. Kind of scumbag too, I heard. Um, we, all that, I mean, the priority list is crazy, but, you know, Kim, I also have to say, too, as well, what you just said over there is kind of really, it, it's really something inside me is really getting me upset. I thought we would be going in the other direction, right? By now. It seems, it seems like we're still in this shit. Because he's They're still worse. doing it. Look, that Bill Maher worse that you showed where he's winning over Bill Maher's audience, lockdown left audience. Yeah. That's the, he, they're coming to him like he's running for office. Yeah. This is like mm -hmm. something you would do to a political opponent. You go and try to dig up something out, of, you know, like with Bill Clinton. Yeah, <laughs> they dug out every sexual misconduct from his past. Yeah, the, the Russell Brand's not running for president. They just saw his charisma, mm -hmm. saying the message he shouldn't say, and that's why there's somebody involved yeah. in the what was it, Information Warfare Department yeah. of the seventy seven. He, he's an information terrorist. You know, he would not kiss <laughs> Zelensky's ass. He was anti-COVID lockdowns on Bill Maher's show. He says, "I in light, I brought you some facts. He talked about the money, how many billionaires we created every single day with the COVID situation. So it seems like that's the reason they're going after him because he's grown so much. It's clearly political. To say, it's guys? definitely political. Yeah. Like whether, whether or not they can dig up something from someone's past and whether or not it's accurate or not, the, why are they doing it right now is a big question. Why do you think they're doing it right? Because now? they obviously want to silence the guy. They're yeah. sick of audiences flocking over to him and agreeing with him. That's what they're afraid of. The government doesn't want to see us rising up and actually resisting against them. Yeah. Well, the, I think a lot of the problem is is the fact that we're not really resisting. We kind of go back to our normal lives. We're consumed. We're trying to pay the bill, put a roof over our head, and then you know other things. Look, it's just, if you dress up like Jesus too much, someone's going to nail your ass to the cross. That's just how it works. That's it.
Kurt Metzger with the words of Wyndham. <laughs> hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Tampa, Boca Raton, Orlando, Dallas, Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois, Indianapolis, and Levittown, New York. Wow, that's a lot of dates. See you there.